Welcome to Bullets and Brass. Today we are talking about bolt action rifles. So this is a Remington 700. It is a short action. It is in 223, which is these little guys. And is magazine fed. This is one of the most common bolt action rifles ever made. In this particular case, it's magazine fed. So external magazine. A lot of them are not. A lot of them are fed from above, and you just you put them down into an internal magazine. And I guess before we go any further, we should demonstrate why they're called what they are, because they don't shoot bolts. That's, you know, there, there are video game weapons called bolt guns, uh, and they shoot some sort of plasma bolt or something. They're bolt actions because there's a, a bolt here, and that's what you manually operate. You've got your barrel, this portion right in here, from, from my finger to my finger, is the actual action. Uh, it is the receiver of the rifle, and they come in a variety of lengths. Uh, in terms of Remingtons, there are short and long. There have been Magnums, which were a little longer than the normal long. Uh, there have been rimfire versions, and still are, that are even shorter than short. Now, what that refers to is primarily this opening. This, this opening has to be big enough for the case to come back out of. Because when you... There's an empty case. Incredibly awkward to do from sitting behind the rifle. There we go. So let's hope it can feed. I don't know if this feeds empty. There we go. So we've got an empty case in here. We'll pretend it just got fired. If I open this, it's going to come out. You also have limitations on how much room for the magazine you have. And if it's an internal magazine, you have to have enough room for the ammo in that position. So short actions, long actions, it's just the physical length of the ammo. It's really that simple. Uh, when the bolt closes, you're locking those lugs into grooves up here in the receiver that holds it in place so that it can't come backward. And you're doing all that manually. It's, I'm physically turning this bolt when I lock that lever down. Back here, it doesn't matter. There, there's a little groove there. It's just visual. It's giving it somewhere to go. Uh, there are rifles that the lever comes way up and it just sticks straight out when it's down. This lever is not what's holding it in place. It's the lugs up front. In this case, this uh, very impressively long looking scope is not actually this long. This whole front piece it is actually a sunshade. Uh, this is a Vortex Viper PST 2.5 to 10. It is a mid price to, to upper mid. Nice scope. I really like it. It is very nice and crisp. Very good controls up here. I don't want to mess with my zero or anything. Uh, I don't have them set. Uh, your adjustment for magnification is back here and has a little click at each, each kind of step along the way. I'm not doing a review of the scope, but, uh, I really do like these scopes. I, I think that the Viper range and the PSTs in general are excellent. I will be doing a comparison between this scope and a primary arms gold line to uh, two to 10 that I have coming because this is basically the competition. Uh, there's a new version of this that's slightly better, better glass. And the primary arms is in the same price range and is supposedly very good. So that's a different video that will, that will be coming along. What else is there to say? Uh, bolt action rifles are very simple. They one shot, work the bolt, one shot. Uh, these days, bolt action rifles tend to be built for more accuracy. They are 
that's their niche in the modern market is if you want a little more accuracy at a particular price point, it is easier to build this to be very accurate, very consistent than it is to build the same thing with a semi-automatic. Price range, uh, since I'm sure people are curious, this particular one started life as a Remington 700 ADL varmint, which is pretty low on the totem pole, honestly. Uh, they, they are the kind of thing that Cabela's carries or uh, used to be Dick Sporting Goods kind of thing. No magazine system, it was an internal magazine. But you could get them for $399, $350 on sale. There's nothing wrong with them. They, they are built on the same platform, built the same way. Barrels tend to be pretty good as their, their high-end brothers. We replaced the stock with an aftermarket stock of our choosing, which we were gonna do anyway, and put in what's called a bottom metal, which is, because it's on the bottom, and that is the part of the receiver that screws in to the top up here and takes either a magazine, an internal magazine, whatever the system is, is just the lower half of the frame of the of the rifle. And there's lots of options. You can get them from a number of different brands. In this case, the Magpul version, you can get matches this rifle or matches this uh, stock. So you don't have to do any, any inletting. You don't have to file anything or cut anything. Just screws right in. That is a bolt action Remington 700. We will have future videos that include this rifle for other comparisons. We will have future videos where we talk about little details of these rifles. Uh, I gave you the gloss overview and there's really, there's a whole lot more to the little details of these and getting the most out of them. <laughs> so thank you for watching. This has been Bullets and Brass talking about bolt action rifles in general and this specific Remington 700. Uh, I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Take care, have fun, and stay safe all.